thank you both so much for being here. Thanks for coming. Uh, Secretary Pete, we have to give some, some belated first birthday congratulations. But how is everyone at home? How are they getting on? How did you celebrate this monumental first birthday? Oh, we're doing great. So we have uh, twins, uh, our, our, our son Joseph, we call him Gus, our daughter Penelope. They just turned one year old. And uh, it's just the best, the best thing in the world. What did you do? What did you do to celebrate? How was the How was the first party? Yeah, it was great. So uh, uh, Chaston planned this. My husband planned this amazing party. Uh, we uh, we had more guests than we could fit in the house, so we kind of op turned our opened up our garage, turned it into a kind of uh, you know put the tables out there, turned the the driveway into a little zone for the party, and uh, we got these cakes. You know, little the kind of smaller cake, the smash cake. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> and so we got them one each. We put it on the on the high chair and to you know see how they would experience cake for the first time and uh, they well, love we, it. We have a photo of them experiencing cake for the first time oh. and oh. it looks like they are absolutely loving it. I mean, <laughs> what do you think your son is thinking there? I got to think he's thinking, I, I, hope, I hope this is what being one year old is all about. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, look I, at that, just pure joy. Pure joy, eating a cake, dressed like DJ Khaled. I absolutely... <laughs> I absolutely, I love it, I do. And if we're talking of incredible summers, Simone, this is amazing. This summer, President Biden awarded you the Presidential Medal of Freedom. You are the youngest person to ever receive this honor. I'm so happy for you. Tell us about this day. Was it just yeah. amazing? It was. Um, it was so much fun. I had my family there, my fiance, uh, my aunt, uncle, uh, my agent. And once we got there, um, the candidate next to me, her name was actually Simone as well. And she was like, so hey. And I was like, yes. She's like, how do you feel? You're the youngest person ever. Where do you go from here? And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good question. I have no idea. She's like, that kind of sucks. <laughs> and I was like, true, but I meant... Who is this, Simone? She's accomplished way much more than me in life and what she's well, she done for to, America. She no, but it was to, true. She needs to back <laughs> off. No, but it's true. And I was like, you're right, because most people get that award when they're quite older than me or maybe have already passed away. So I was like, yeah, I really don't know what I do with the rest of my life for now. Yeah. <laughs> now, Secretary B, you are the Secretary of Transportation. Let's talk about this. This past summer, I'm sure people here in the audience experienced this. A lot of disruption. Thousands of flights cancelled, uh, even more delayed. It was kind of a brutal summer for travel. What can be done about this? Do you think this issue will be sorted in time for the holidays. I think it's going to get better by the holidays. We're really pressing the airlines to deliver better service. So many people have been delayed, been canceled. It's happened to me several times this summer. And uh, the, the, the fact is they need to be ready to service the tickets that they're selling. Now, the good news is, you know, the, the people are going back to the skies. They have the income. They have the inclination. We've put off holidays. We've put off trips for two years. We're finally doing it again, which is great. Uh, but we need to make sure that the system is ready. So we're taking a number of steps. And, and if you've ever been mistreated by an airline, if they haven't given you the refund they owe you, if they haven't lived up to their customer service obligations, we will have your back. You can come to our department, uh, file a complaint, and we will, we, on our website, we're making it clear right now what your rights are. And uh, even just by, we put up a new tool just a few days ago to let you know airline by airline what to expect if you do have a problem. Will they give you a voucher for a hotel if you get stuck? Will they take care of a meal? Will they rebook you on another flight? Just since we announced that we were going to post that on our website, we went from zero of the top 10 airlines committing that they were going to provide a meal or a hotel, for example, to eight out of 10 doing it. So we're, we're pushing them, they're responding, but when they actually fail to, to live up to the rules, uh, there's serious enforcement behind that, and we want to know if that's happened to you. I like the idea of looking on that website, seeing all of the things that airlines offer if there's a problem or an issue, and then just Spirit Airlines being blank. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit Airlines is just a blank thing, and even if they manage to get you, they go, ah, Secretary Buttigieg, I, I had a nightmare, my flight was cancelled, it was awful, and you go, who did you fly with? They go, I booked with Spirit Airlines. You go, well, that's on you. <laughs> that's... There's nothing I can do about that, really, at this point. I mean, so you had a... You had a bad experience flying this summer. What, what happened? Yes, so I was actually coming back from um, receiving the medal. Um, oh, on, on this very day? Yes. Wow, OK. Yes. So the next morning, me and my fiancé board, and um, the flight attendant, I get on board, and she offers me the little wings. And I'm like, no, I'm OK. Like, thank you, though. And then she offers me a coloring book. And I'm looking at her, and I'm like, and she goes, here, kid. And I'm like, 
I'm 25, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> and I just sat in my seat, and then the other flight attendant brought me a mimosa, so. Oh, well, you <laughs> love that other. He loved that other. Yeah. Uh, that's a, wow, were you not just wearing it? I wasn't, it was a way. I yeah. would wear it all day. <laughs> I would yeah. be wearing it now, and I'd just go, oh, this, it's freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, GP, I want to talk to you about this. Everybody has seen this. You are... Well, you, last time you were on the show, we talked about You are so good. At, I think your greatest strength is you are a, a fantastic communicator. You are a wonderful communicator, particularly when you go on to stations like Fox News and things like that. You are incredible at just getting a very measured message across. How would you... How would you try to describe, so sort of, let's say like a very sort of right-wing Republican, what I guess would now be called like a MAGA Republican, to understand the severity of how serious it is to have top-secret nuclear codes at your beach resort in Florida, <laughs> having taken them from the White House, why that is a bad idea and a bad thing to do? I mean, some things hopefully you don't have to explain, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, look, and, you know, I, I can't comment on, on the case. It's, it's obviously with law enforcement, and all I know is why I read in the paper. What I will tell you is, you know, I was in the military, and I, I, part of my job was to handle classified information. And we learned to take that incredibly seriously. I still occasionally have uh, a nightmare that I accidentally brought a cell phone, I'll dream, in, into one of the spaces uh, where we would read that classified material, because you're not allowed to do that. Because you get it drilled into you so much, you become almost afraid of touching this stuff. Uh, yeah. it, is, it is so important to handle it properly and with respect. And so, uh, all I'll just say is that's, that's really important. <laughs> did you, did you, and just, you can answer me with blinks, did you read anything about, like, aliens? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. I, <laughs> I, I was a counterterrorism guy. The, the UFOs didn't come up much. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to talk to you about this, uh, Secretary. The, the many people are very, very excited about the wonderful news about getting some student loan debt relief, which is, I think, a, a, a monumental uh, moment and a great thing that President Biden did. There are Republicans out there, and I'm kind of amused by this, the, the Republicans who are trying to stop this by, by filing lawsuits. Why would anybody do that? Do they have a chance of succeeding in such a thing? And why is this serious? Yeah, I mean, look, look, we're living in a moment, especially with what we've been through with inflation, with, with the high prices, where people are up against a lot. And, and this student loan relief brought a lot of people some breathing room, just made it a little bit easier to get through life. And I don't know why anybody would want to go in and make it harder. But again, then again, the, you know, they've taken a lot of votes in Congress that I don't understand. I don't know what, I don't understand why all the Republicans in Congress voted no on $35 a month insulin. That, that would have been really useful. And we at least uh, were able to get it through for people on Medicare, that, that, that insulin is now capped at $35 a month. Or, uh, you know, we also were able to make it cheaper to get an electric vehicle if you want to save money on gas. But, uh, but all the Republican members of Congress voted no on that, even though they're also beating us up uh, by saying that EVs are too expensive. Then there was, there was a chance to make it cheaper, and we did, and we succeeded. Uh, but they stood in the way of that. I honestly don't understand the mentality of going on TV talking about uh, prices going up being a problem, which, by the way, it is. That's why that's the president's top economic policy priority. And then, and then fighting us when we're trying to make it cheaper. Can I tell you something just from me personally, who's British? I would really, really love it if you were the president of the United States one day. I think it'd be absolutely brilliant. Very kind. I really would. <laughs> I've always felt it. I think it would be great. Simone, let's talk about your brilliant new Snapchat show, Daring Simone Biles. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what this is about. Yes, so we have many episodes that I've been dared to do. Um, they, I did about eight dares or so, and so I just went in. There are many episodes on Snapchat because that's kind of what my generation uses to communicate, try to date and watch these mini-series so it doesn't take up too much of your time so you can do whatever. But, yeah, that's... Pretty much what it's about. So, so Torja, which challenge that you had to do was the scariest challenge you, you were um, dared to do? One of them, I would say, was a B episode and... A B episode? Yes. Okay. A B episode. Or the second one was probably hosting my own talk show. I was terrified. It's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with the Bs? 
Um, in 2014 at World Championships, um, a bee chased me around the podium, and I've just been, I just hate bugs, terrified of them. It's not for me. So I got to go into a suit and go into like a bee place and exhaust the fumes or whatever. Fume, I don't know. Mm. I don't know if I'm, well. did, um, did any of them get you? No, thank God. Because I've never been stung, so I didn't know how I would react. And they were telling me, like, oh, take your engagement ring off, because if you get stung, you'll get all swollen and stuff. And I was like, I thought the suit was supposed to protect me. Mm. So I still had to um, go in there. Well, we actually got some bees. Oh, uh, no, no, no. no I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would, uh, what would, what would, what, what dare would scare you the wow. most? Uh, the bees thing sounds pretty, pretty scary, yeah. actually. One time I was giving a speech, actually, uh, a campaigning, and a bee landed right on my tire, like right there. And just stayed there. No, but I wasn't sure what to do, so I just very, very slowly <laughs> took off the tie, and it, did, it didn't move. You took off the um, tie? Well, I couldn't leave. I couldn't keep giving my speech with the bee on my tie. So either the bee had to go, or the tie had to go, or, you know, or I had to go. I would have so. just gone. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember yeah. when that fly landed on Mike Pence's head? Yes. <laughs> you were there? Yeah, because I had, um... I was uh, uh, helping uh, the vice president, now vice president, uh, prepare for the debate, and my job was to play... Mike Pence in the preparation. Oh wow! And so I got to sit, but you know we were in the auditorium, so yeah. I was sitting up in the you know on the balcony somewhere, and I was of course you know we'd spent so much time preparing for the debate, I was yeah. so absorbed, and she did a great job, and then I came out later, and people were like, "What was up with that fly?" I was like, "What? What fly?" I couldn't see it, you know. So yeah. when you're practicing to be Mike Pence, what do you do? Do you sort of get into character, drain yourself of personality? <laughs> Did yeah, you I mean, go with of... the whole sort of quiet, stiff kind of mm, eyes? Did you really commit to the role? Yeah, I mean, it's not like preparing for the Olympics. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you, you know, you read up, you think of what he would have said in that situation, and then hopefully the person you're helping is, is prepared for anything that could come her way. And if you're asked to help again in the next, when the next election comes, do you think it'll ever come up like, what will you do if a fly lands on your face? <laughs> well, you know, you're, you, you always want to prepare for uh, what you've learned from the... <laughs> 